Kindred spirits across Europe watched in horror as the first European nation to attempt revolution, led by Lafayette and other leaders of Franklin's network, who had made the American cause a success, was overthrown by a Jacobin color revolution. The noble origins of the June 20th, 1789 tennis court oath that kick-started the French Revolution were soon lost as a bloodbath directed by British assets from the Foreign Office channeled the rage of France's peasant population against all of the elite, corrupt and noble alike, proclaiming, the revolution has no need of scientists. The sound of the guillotine lopping off the heads of the great revolutionary astronomer and mayor of Paris, Jean-Sylvain Bailey, and chemist Antoine Lavoisier, still resonates as a shame of France. Lafayette only saved his head long enough to end up in an Austrian dungeon for five years as punishment for fighting to overthrow hereditary systems, and was immortalized in Beethoven's only opera, Fidelio, in 1805. The pro-humanist forces of Europe slowly came undone during the Napoleonic Wars, which culminated in the 1815 Congress of Vienna and the Holy Alliance, which re-established peace by banning dangerous books, teaching, and art that might awaken revolutionary feelings in the minds and hearts of Europeans. These Orwellian laws were outlined in the Carlsbad Decrees of 1819 and ruined more than a few lives of great statesmen and teachers. During this time, the British Empire came out again as a force of evil, preparing a new phase of its global conquest with a crushing of the Hyder Ali spirit in India and a new age of opium wars against China. In spite of this growing darkness, great poets who dreamt of that better age of reason produced some of the greatest and most underappreciated poetry, with Percy Shelley and John Keats leading that movement in Britain, Robert Burns in Scotland, and such figures as Schubert, Heine, Schumann, and Beethoven representing this spark in Vienna and Germany. At the same time, Palmerston and Mazzini's young Europe anarchist mobs were periodically deployed to disrupt constructive nationalist tendencies, laying the groundwork for colored revolutions of the 20th and 21st centuries. Beethoven's 1824 Ninth Symphony, setting Schiller's great poem, Ode to Joy, to music, was a celebration of that dreamed-of age of brotherhood and creative reason to which Franklin had devoted his life and which today's multipolar alliance has again revived as a potential alternative to an age of darkness, war, and collapse facing humanity in the 21st century.